Okay, I think we're live. Um, let's just wait a few moments for some people to come on. Let me fire up the chat. Let me know if the audio and everything is good. If you were here a couple of weeks ago, you'll know that we had a few uh, technical issues. I'm hoping they're all been ironed out this evening. So um, if you can hear me okay, do let me know. If you can't, let me know as well and I'll try and get that sorted. I've got Marcus just standing by, he's ready to come on. So um, we're hoping for a good stream tonight. Hey guys, if you can hear my sound, let me know as well. That is the, that's the kicker, right? Yeah, that's the one. So let's just wait for everyone to kind of settle down and to see what we, uh, see what we get. All right. I think uh, we were okay. Let me just bring you on now, uh, Marcus. All right. Okay, there we go. So, who we got on tonight? Hello, the regulars. We've got Thurman and we've got Ian. Um, Marcus, say something. Can you can can they hear you? Let's see. Hey guys, this is Marcus here. If you can hear me, okay, let me know. Uh, type the word Marcus in the box if you can hear me. All right. Okay, hello, Ali. Hello, Osmar. All right, cool. Looks like the sound's working. Yeah, we're getting some cool. people saying, Marcus, so I think we're all good. So tonight, um, we can talk about whatever you guys like. If you've got any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. If not, me and Marcus will just have a discussion about uh, affiliate marketing, um, whether what he, what he thinks about Amazon affiliate marketing, what he thinks about um, CPA offers, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, we're ready to, to answer your questions. Unless you've got something you want to start with, Marcus? Sure, yeah, we could start with it. Now, um, on a scale of 1 to 10, how are you guys with affiliate marketing? 1 being like, you know, I've never made anything, I'm still trying it out. And 10 being, hey, Marcus, I should be running the uh, show here. Um, let me know where you're at. That way we can kind of get an, an idea. Um, and if it's somewhere in between, that that's good as well. Um, so yeah, just, you know, we'll kind of get going from here. Uh, talk about affiliate marketing. Now, um, if you guys haven't heard of me, I am known as the affiliate marketing dude. We actually have shirts now, right? Fancy. <laughs> it must um, be real, And yeah. uh, what I've done is for the last 18 years, I've done affiliate marketing full time uh, from the comfort of my own home, uh, stay home with my kids and everything, uh, much like Alex does as well. And what I do is I do affiliate marketing. I started with a small SEO company where we uh, would rank different websites. We drank, rank different um, businesses and things like that. And I noticed that, hey, these guys are getting traffic. This is pretty cool. Um, and I started doing affiliate marketing. In about 2008, um, blogs came along. I, I don't know if you remember. We had, um, what was it? Movable Type was one that came out. There were some others that came out as well. And uh, everyone was telling me, hey, you need to get into blogs. You need to do this blogging thing. Um, and, you know, I'm kind of a slow starter. Like, I'm still trying to get into Instagram. So I'm a little bit late on some things. Uh, and blogging was the same. I got into it around 2009. I uh, started learning a lot about uh, how blogs worked. And I realized that blogs, hey, using WordPress, you know, it actually gets you picked up in the search engines in minutes rather than having to, like, link with a big site and, and focus on all this stuff, I was able to get these things ranked in minutes. And I noticed that for my students who wanted to learn affiliate marketing, it was a great way to go because you didn't have to know HTML, you didn't have to know how to upload files, uh, you just kind of type things in the box, put some images on, and boom, you got a website. Uh, so it was really cool, it worked really awesome. And I, I was kind of hesitant at first with WordPress because of the fact that it was set up to be a content management system, not a sales system, right? So for me as an affiliate, I would look at it and I'd be like, okay, well, you know, I have this site and as an affiliate, I would build websites the way that I made them. I'd make like a three or five page website. I'd run it on paid search. And, and for those that uh, haven't done paid search, paid search traffic is kind of the benchmark for me because I know that if I can make money with paid traffic, then I can go get all the SEO I want and make a fortune. And so for me, with these things, I was like, okay, let's set up a three-page regular HTML website, 
and run it on the search engines. And some of them would make, you know, 300 bucks a day. Um, I had some that made as much as $4,500 a day uh, with a little one page site. And to me, I was like, okay, this is neat. I like what I do. And then WordPress came along and blogs came along and I saw the benefit of the blogs. But my problem was like, how do I get them to convert? Because here you have a blog, you have your sidebar widgets, you have your header. And for me, the conversion just didn't work, right? It was like, okay, here I run them to my HTML site and boom, uh, I make 4,500 bucks a day. I send them to my WordPress site and you know, I'm making like a couple hundred bucks a day with the same traffic. So I was very concerned about that. And what I did is I tried to, to work around WordPress and understand how it worked, understand how the pages, the posts work, understand how plugins work. And uh, through the process, I spent a small fortune building plugins that made the blog do what we wanted them to do, right? I wanted the blog to convert my visitors. I wanted it to be very simple. I wanted them to be very one track, boom. You know, you're gonna go here, here's what you're gonna get, here's what the topic's about, now you need to do this next thing. So for example, let's say that I went out and I found a keyword uh, like the IRS form. There's an IRS form, um, it was like form 960 or something. Don't quote me on it. It might be a different form, uh, but it was, it's actually four numbers. So it might've been like 4960 or whatever. But this IRS form was something people were looking for and they wanted to download it. Okay. Thousands of people a month were looking up this form. Now I knew that this form was for people to get a payment plan. Okay. So I know like for me, the number one thing is, is knowing why my visitor is on my site, knowing why someone is searching for something. Um, you know, you might have a site like Alex's site, WP Eagle. And if you know why the people are there, if I know, Hey, check it out. Everyone's coming to this post and I know why they're there, then boom, I can now take them to what I want. So if I know these people are there and they come from this IRS form and they want to get this form, which is for a payment plan, then I can kind of look in my brain and say, well, you know, my guess is, is they probably haven't paid their taxes all the way. So maybe we can help them by helping them fill out the form and then offer them things like, for example, we have like CPA affiliate offers, which for those that don't know, you have regular affiliate stuff. Regular affiliate stuff is like um, Amazon, uh, ClickBank, different things like that, like normal affiliate things, JVZoo, stuff like that. Now, we also have the CPA affiliate, which stands for cost per action, where this company will actually pay us for an action. So like the old deal would be, okay, well, maybe there's a ClickBank book on how to do your taxes and whatever. Okay, good, not very targeted. Now I want the best targeted thing I can offer my visitors. And I would go here and I'd say, okay, well, ultimately they want like to pay their taxes off. So I know that CPA networks have offers where all I have to do is get someone to fill out a form, right? They put their info in, sit, hit submit, and boom, I get like 10, maybe $40 for them to fill out that form. Now I also know that they have forms for tax attorneys and forms for tax payment plans and different things like that. So it's kind of an ace in the hole, right? Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, and I'll try to write a little bit uh, bigger as well. Um, for those that don't know who have, haven't been to my uh, live streams, I write to keep myself focused rather than for people to read it. So it's kind of like a mapping out. So uh, maybe we'll get you a picture of this or whatnot. But this is kind of the idea here is we really want to focus on what works. We want to focus on getting the visitor and getting them to what is going to make us money. Okay, I think we might have a little technical issue there. How are we doing? seen a bunch of numbers okay uh, i think you're back i think you're back okay i think i am back yeah on that screen i am i think this has a delay let me just reload this so i could see yeah we're all good okay cool yeah so that's kind of the idea is is we want to focus on our keywords right um and with wordpress we look at it and we're like okay i need to be able to convert as many visitors as possible because on the internet you have a lot of people who get a lot of traffic right if you guys have a blog and you get a decent amount of traffic, just type traffic in all caps, say traffic. Um, and the same thing happens with blogs, the same thing happens with YouTubers, the same thing happens with business sites. And what happens is they get the traffic, but they don't make the conversion, right? The amount of money they're making per visitor is very, very low. Now, what I specialized in and still specialize in is really getting that traffic and, and getting it to convert 
in a way that's going to make us a lot of money. Um, and I do this through mailing lists. I do it through direct pages, right? Just something direct where it's like, hey, this site is about the IRS thing. Um, this site is about taxes or credit or something like that. And it works really good. Now, Helen says that traffic would be good. Um, if you guys struggle with traffic, right? The key here is that you want to go and you want to find what we call trigger words. Okay. You want to find words of people who want what you have to offer, but don't know it yet. Okay. So take, for example, I know you guys are really familiar with Alex's site. Okay. Alex has a site and it's about WordPress, right? Would, is there a, is there a subcategory, like something you would say, well, Marcus, I'm not really about WordPress. I'm about this. No, no, right? I am, but it's be? about tutorials, really. It's about teaching people about WordPress, that kind of stuff. But generally, okay. tutorials around WordPress, yeah. Excellent. So now, if you were to go for WordPress tutorial, that's going to be a pretty competitive word. I don't know. You might have that now. Um, but in no, the beginning, it's, it's if you were to try yeah. to go for WordPress tutorial, that's going to be extremely difficult, right? It's going to be very, very difficult. But what we need to realize is that a lot of people are searching for lots of different things. Okay, so you might have, um, like one I did was all in one SEO tutorial, right? This all in one SEO tutorial was very easy to rank for. I made a simple blog post. I made a simple video showing them how it works. And boom, now I get traffic from that. And then you could go through and say, well, uh, here's another one we did, which is how to add ClickBank to your blog or how to add AdSense to your blog. And you want to kind of break it up. Now, if you already have traffic, okay, if you already have traffic, the key is, is to know what your traffic wants. So for example, a couple weeks ago, I did a video about um, using, I think it was Wix. Okay, how do you use Wix? How does that work for um, affiliate marketing? Does it work for affiliate marketing and things like that? Now I noticed that by posting a simple blog post and putting the video on there with a little bit of text, I noticed we started ranking on the search engines. We started getting traffic all the time, right? Every day I log in, there's people on there on that Wix page and I know we're getting traffic. Now the question is, is this one is getting traffic, okay? So now I have my site, which is about affiliate marketing, okay? Now I have this post that's getting traffic, which is for Wix, okay? So I'm like, cool, what do I do with this, right? How do I make this work? Well, what I have to do is I have to take a look and I have to say, what do I want these people to do? Okay, again, just like with the IRS thing, what's gonna make me money, but also fit what they want, right? What's going to work and also fit? Because I can't come on here and be like, hey, Wix is whatever, here's how it works. Um, I want to get them into something that pays me, right? So either I could become an affiliate of Wix, which I think is possible, or I could teach them a different route. One of the routes I take is getting them into web hosting and then getting them into my affiliate blog. Because what you're going to notice, right, the affiliate blog tools, what you're going to notice is when you do this stuff, okay, a lot of these people are going to be interested in your stuff, but they don't know it yet. Okay, a guy who's looking at Wix or something, I know he needs my products. I know he needs my stuff. Okay, very, very important. And like uh, Success Roller Coaster says, you know, they, they don't give you control. Exactly. So I say, hey, look, here's the pros and cons of how to use this. Here's my advice. Okay, same kind of thing here. Here's how you fill out the IRS form. Great. Now that you've figured it out, here's the steps that you're going to need to take to get better. Or uh, perhaps you have something like remove hard inquiry from, uh, uh, from credit report. Okay, now that word's easy to go for. It's easy traffic. But again, we have to make our page very, very, very straight on getting them what we want them to do. Okay, and we have to have it to where it makes sense. So you could say, here's how to remove these from your credit report. By the way, go to this CPA offer where they can fill out the form to get credit repair or whatever, right? Does that make sense to everyone? It has to be very congruent. And that's why I've spent a small fortune making plugins that make this possible because what I can do is I can actually go onto this page using these plugins and I can go on and be like, okay, boom, I want a different sidebar set for this only. I want some ads on this only. I wanna have a rotator on this. I wanna have something that's going to make them click and convert because I knew from the stuff that I did that you have to have things that get clicks. And most people, when you have a blog, most people are sitting at like a 90, let's say 70 to 90% bounce rate, okay? What that means is that 70 to 90% of the people who visit your site are leaving without doing anything. Now, to me, that's like 79% of the money just going out of my wallet, 
going somewhere else because I did all the work to get them there. So if they leave, I'm hosed, right? And these things you really have to pay attention to because if you can really focus and get people to where you want them to go, it's going to make a lot of sense. Now, Helen says, uh, yes, I'm a freelance bookkeeper for the self-employed. Perfect, right? You want new clients? What you do is you go there and you're like, okay, what else are people looking up? Am I local or am I global? Can I do this for anyone? Um, and we look at that and we're like, okay, cool. So I could go through here and I could say, well, how about people looking up all the different forms, right? And now this is where you get the gold, right? You go in here and you're like, okay, well, what are the forms I specialize in? Okay, she's a bookkeeper. Uh, probably like a Schedule C, okay? Schedule schedule C form, okay? And you can go through and you could do a Google search for tax forms uh, for um, business owners. And boom, you're gonna get all the tax forms. And guess what? You're gonna get all these business owners that are trying to fill this stuff out themselves, which is like the worst thing you can do as a business owner. Um, and all you have to do is pitch them on it, which is really cool. Okay, R7Eagle says, what is an acceptable bounce rate? Well, great question. Um, it depends on your traffic. Okay, if you're getting traffic that's not, like if you're getting a bunch of traffic that's not super targeted, it's probably gonna have a higher bounce rate. Now for me, what I look at, so I had a site in the Bible niche, okay? This site was in the Bible niche, and I hope you like my drawings here. Okay, this site was in the Bible niche, and um, these people wanted Bible. They wanted to read the Bible online. That was the nature of the term that we used. Okay, read the Bible online. And these people would come to my site, and what I did is I had the different Bibles there, and I was running them to a CPA offer that gave me $3 when they downloaded the Bible. Okay, all they had to do is download a little Chrome extension or a toolbar that gave them all the Bible versions, and then boom, I got three bucks. Now, I want you guys to guess. This is a pretty broad market, okay? These people might have wanted to just read the Bible, right? That, that all might be it. I, they might just want to read it, and I can't really make money off that unless I think different. So here I was, I got this vis the visitors for the word, read the Bible online. They came to my page. Now, if I sent them to a regular blog that said, oh, well, well here's how to read the Bible. Great, wonderful. Uh, download the toolbar. Okay, I probably wouldn't get that much. I probably would have had the 70 to 90% bounce rate, meaning all those people are gone. I can't make money on these people. They're gone. So what I did here, and I want you guys to guess, what do you think my bounce rate was on this site? Okay, when I set this Bible site up, what do you think I got? 70 to 90% bounce rate is normal. I want you guys to guess, put your answers in the box, what my Bible site got. And we'll wait on that, because I think it'll be kind of fun. Okay, and is this making, uh, making sense for you, Alex? Okay, cool. And let's see if anyone guesses here. Okay, I don't want to make money on religion. That's just my opinion. Well, I wasn't making money on religion. I was making money on, on a book. A Bible thing, a toolbar, um, and it's totally fine. Whatever you want to do, there's toolbars for smiley faces. You can make money on happy faces if you have a problem with that. Okay, uh, Vital says 50%. Charles says zero. Okay, go ahead, type them in. What do you think it was? The average is about 70 to 90 percent. Okay, someone said 95, 40, 30. All right, here's what it looked like. We were actually running a 99% CTR. That means 99% of the people who came to the site, right? I, I drive 100 people here, 99 went to the offer, which means my bounce rate was 1%, okay? Now, do you guys see how that would make you a lot more money? Does everyone see that? All right, we look at that, we're like, okay, yeah, obviously if I'm keeping all my visitors. Now, the way that I did it was very, very important. What I did is I focused on why the visitor was there. I'm like, okay, this visitor's here, he wants to read the Bible on the internet. Now, chances are he probably wants to like read it all the time. He probably just doesn't want to read it once because that's kind of like the people who like that book like to read it all the time. And so what I did, uh, CTR is click through rate. Okay, that's the amount of people that came to my site and clicked to the offer. Okay, now the more people that see that offer that I get paid on, the more money I'm going to make. Okay, so we look at that. And we're like, okay, so I got 99% click-through rate, less about 1% or less left my site without doing anything. How did I do it, right? How many of you guys would like to know how I did that? Um, and I'll show you because it's actually really cool. And it works in every niche if you can be creative enough. The key here is being creative and being direct. 
because there's things that your people are buying. And a lot of people, right, before you join this webinar, how many of you guys would have said, well, people wanting to read the Bible online is not a buyer's market. It's not a money-making market. It's just someone looking for free stuff, right? If you're honest with yourself, how many of you guys thought that that's just a freebie-seeking market? And, it, and you'd be right. I mean, some people buy Bibles. And if I did Amazon affiliate marketing, I'd probably get like, one out of a thousand people to buy a Bible for maybe 50 bucks. And I'd end up with like, what, 25 cents or something <laughs> or like 50 cents. I think it would be uh, if they were paying uh, 10% or something like that. Okay. So a lot of people said they thought it'd be dead. Now, the way that I did this is I used psychology of what people want. Okay. This is how it works. Like you have to look at it because your website, your blog is like your own graphical user interface. Okay, you are interfacing or interacting with your market and you gotta get them to do something. So what I said on this is I said, well, you know, there's a lot of different Bible versions. So what I did is I made a little side, it had a little Bible up here, and then it had, uh, you know, a little arrow here for people who wanted to opt in and get uh, different things. So on the sidebar, I had like, you know, get my Bible reading plan, and I just downloaded a free Bible reading plan, or you can even link to them. And very few people opted in. That's not how I made the money. Uh, what I did was I had different Bibles. So I had a little pictures of Bibles, little icons, okay? And I had 12 of them. And I had... Um, Bible version. So I had NIV, I had King James, I had New King James, and all the different versions, right? So now instead of my visitors coming here and reading about an affiliate offer or seeing banner ads for an affiliate offer, I was like, hey, check it out. Which version do you want? Okay, very cool. Like, like if I was to come on this and I say, uh, you know, hey, welcome to Marcus's affiliate marketing make money site. Uh, today we're going to talk about blah, 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 blah. That'd be lame, right? You get a big bounce rate. But if I said, hey, welcome to my site. What are you looking to earn? Do you want to do this as a side income? You know, you want to earn 10000 a month? Do you want to earn 1000 uh, Do you want to just supplement your retirement? If I had a little drop-down box, boom, that would work, right? So it's a psychology of how this stuff works. And that's why with our plugins I developed, I had um, on a lottery ticket site, another site that people would say, well, hey, what the heck, dude? How do you make money on people that want to look up winning lottery numbers, right? They get their little lottery ticket and I got one today. I actually didn't even plan on this. I just always get them when I go to the gas station and I have to go in because I'm like, okay, I had to go in here. So I might as well get one. And they look up their numbers and they're like, hey, maybe I won. Cool. So they come to my site and I'm like winning numbers. Now I could go through and I could be like, if you download the toolbar, it's going to have the winning numbers all the time. Okay. Not going to work. Instead, what I did is I had some info about the lottery, whatever, and then I had a drop-down box. And the drop-down box had the dates. So it was like, check your numbers, March 5, March 20, March 6, whatever. I had like at most a month, and I kept it rotating so that it updated. And do you know over 99% of the people clicked this drop-down box? And guess what happened after they clicked it? Boom, they went to the lottery um, toolbar download. Okay, and it wasn't like a lottery thing like you know win the lottery it was just find the numbers right all they wanted to do was see if they won um and i was able to convert that i think the first day that blog went live i set it up in 2013 and uh, the first day it went live i actually built the site on a live webinar um, i think you can find it on my youtube channel where i built the site in wordpress put the drop down and within 13 minutes, we made like $6 or something. And by the end of the day, uh, we had made like 1600 bucks or 1300 bucks just off the toolbar. And I was getting like $2.50 per download. Um, and it was really cool, right? These, these are the things that you really have to look at because people as a whole, people that are blog owners don't understand the value of their traffic, right? I see people all the time and they're like, hey, man, you can buy a an ad on my site for a hundred bucks. And I'm like, hell yeah, I'll buy that ad on your site for a hundred bucks because I know the value of your traffic. And a lot of people don't understand the value of the traffic and they don't understand how this works. Like people who are out there uh, teaching people how to upload files. Okay. Those people need web hosting, right? Um, and there's lots of things that you can do. You just have to really look at it. Now, um, the Furman UK says, how did you rank the lottery site? What sort of content did you put on there? Um, it had one page of content that talked about lottery stuff. I think it was like two paragraphs. Um, it was three pages total. I had like a terms and conditions. I had a ClickBank offer, which made me like 80 bucks a day or something. Um, and, um, 
that was it, right? I paid for traffic. So I went to MSN. I got traffic for two to five cents a click, sent them to the site, boom, made money. So it was really cool. Now, if I could have ranked it on free traffic, I would have made more money. Um, but uh, sometimes paying for traffic is a good way to go as well. I guess paid, um, and paid traffic was a bit cheaper back then. It still is. Yeah, I still buy traffic today that's super, super cheap. Um, it, the thing is, people don't realize it. Like, um, And you have to look at this. So like, when you go into the Google AdWords tool, okay, you go into the Google AdWords tool, and you're like, okay, I'm going to go here. I'm going to look up a keyword. I want to rank for it. Okay, what most people do is they look at the CPA offers and they look for things like tax attorney, tax lawyer, um, tax payment plan. Okay, these are extremely expensive, right? Like, Alex, have you ever looked this up for the word word uh, web web hosting? Have you ever looked? No, up yeah, the, I'm, I'd imagine it's like twenty pounds a click, if not more. Exactly, right? It's like ten to twenty dollars a click, um, probably even more in pounds. I think the pound is more, um, something like that. Right. So we have web hosting and we're like, wow, you know, so like, Alex, I want you to think for a minute. If you had to buy traffic for twenty dollars a click for your web hosting affiliate offer, would you make any money? It'd be touch and go. I'd have to convert every <laughs> every five or six wow. clicks. Yeah. Yeah. Which is impossible. Yeah. Not going to happen. Right. I do this. I've done this for a long time. I can't convert one out of every five. Not going to happen. Um, so what we do is we look around the beaten path. So instead of going for something like web hosting or cheap web hosting or what they call a long tail keyword, right? A long tail would be like web hosting for blog sites that have whatever, right? It'd be like a long keyword. These are still expensive. So what we want to do is want to go uh, around the beaten path and we want to say, well, what, who needs web hosting but doesn't know it, right? That's the million dollar question. Who needs web hosting but doesn't know it? Well, these people looking up Wix do, they just don't know it yet. These people looking up, how do I start a blog? They do. They just don't know it yet. Um, and what happens is the content becomes easier to create because instead of writing about this web hosting in general, I now say, here's how to set up your blog in four simple steps. Number one, get your domain name and web hosting. Click here to get it. I'm an affiliate, blah, blah, blah. Number two, number three, and so on. Right? Does that make sense to everyone? I think it does. Okay, so we got some questions. Um, David says, I got barred of AdWords, wrote an ad wrong or something. Okay, there's two things you can do. One, you can appeal it or get a different account. Or two, you can go to MSN, right? A lot of people don't realize this, but MSN is like a pretty big search engine. I don't there's think enough call... <laughs> in these words. Yeah, I don't think it's called MSN on. anymore, is it? Isn't it, called, that? isn't it called Bing now or something? Bing, yeah, same same difference. You're uh, old they, they also yeah. run their ads on Yahoo. Um, so yeah, MSN, Bing. Um, is the way to go. Um, so yeah, it's very easy. Now, R7 Eagle says, uh, do one page or two page sites do as well as five or more pages in regards to Google ranking? Or does the number of pages make any difference? Well, first of all, okay, if you want to get traffic, the first thing you need to do is find the right keyword. Okay, traffic and SEO is all about the keyword. Okay, spend 99% of your time on the keyword, 1% on all that backlinking fancy stuff, which actually I don't even do backlinks. I don't even use an SEO plugin anymore. I just set these things up because the keyword speaks for itself. Now, what you want to do is you want to focus on that keyword and say, how can I really, really refine? Because instead of being an expert in affiliate marketing, I want to be an expert in a subset. Okay, I want to be an expert in maybe like um, affiliate marketing CPA offers with WordPress. Okay, if I can be an expert in that, I can start to build. Okay, so you get your keyword first. That's number one. Number two is build your site the right way around the keyword. Focus on that keyword. Focus on really giving them what they want. On the Wix article, I got to give them what they want. I have to really focus on it and say, hey, this is how it works. These are the pros. These are the cons. This is how we're going to do it. Okay, the Bible site, this was paid traffic, totally different ballgame. When we're talking about SEO, keyword first, then you want to go through write your site okay so you start writing your site you're like okay what's out there what subcategory words are there for this what's the other stuff okay then three you want to set it up the right way so the way that i set up my blogs is very very important so i set up my blogs to where i have pages on the front okay so these are my pages on the pages we have links to the other pages right so it'd be like um set up your blog okay set up your blog would be page one um, how to structure your blog would be page two. Something else about a blog would be page three. These would all be based on the top three words 
for my main keyword. Okay, now behind the scenes, we have our posts. Okay, so you bloggers, you know the difference between a page and a post. A page is like a page that's static. A post is something that you post that people see later. Okay, pretty cool. Now, on normal WordPress, you have your sidebar widgets. Okay, you got your widgets. Usually it'll have a list of your posts and everything like that. Now, I don't do that. What I do is I put an opt-in box on my pages. Okay, so put your name, put your email, blah, blah, blah. This is on all the pages. Okay, cool. Excellent. Great. Wonderful. Now, on my post, and that's all I have. I don't have any other sidebar stuff on my pages. On the posts, okay, we go to our post. The posts are going to be about your other keywords. So I have my blog. You could go there. Um, Affiliate Marketing Dude. It's got the pages across the top. It's like get your free software. Check this out. How to make money. Buy Marcus's products. Okay, that's what we got. Now, those are on the pages. They're on the posts. It's always on the top. It's the way it works. Next, on our posts, what I have is I have different ads and things like that. This is an ad rotator and other things. And then I also have a list of recent posts. So where most of them have the recent post everywhere, I don't do that. Now, your recent posts, these are what gets picked up by Google. And these should be related to all your other keywords because as you start to grow and start to create lots of content, it's going to work extremely well. Okay, I think we have a lot of questions coming in here. Yeah, there's quite a few questions coming in. Um, okay, let me see if I can... There's one there. Any keyword tool that you recommend? Uh, the AdWords tool is what I use. Um, I love the Google AdWords tool. I think it's great. Um, and it's free, so, I mean, that's where I start. Um, there's a couple other tools I'm trying out, but I'm not really sold on them yet. Um, so, yeah. All right, other questions coming Someone in? Someone said, you don't use Yoast SEO. Um, no, I actually haven't used an SEO plugin in about two years. Um, I find that just having your title and your domain name match is usually pretty good, as long as you have the right keyword. Okay. And what about... Because if you have the right keyword, you know, like if there's only nine rankings for a keyword and you're like guaranteed a 10 spot if uh, if there's only nine. Yeah, you don't need to do much more. So you don't worry about things like Google Webmaster Console, uh, XML sitemaps, any of that stuff? No, uh, WordPress actually has a built-in sitemap on it through the RSS feed. Um, so like if I was going to do something... Uh, what I would do is I'd rather spend time, maybe get like a, a Yahoo directory listing or a DMOZ directory listing for my domain, because that's going to start to ramp things up um, and it'll start to get you picked up a lot faster. Ian's got a question in particular about your browser add-on and uh, it asks to change files and settings. Is that something to worry about? Uh, not usually. Ours doesn't do that. Uh, what our browser add-on is, is a glorified web page. Um, so that's all it is, is a web page. Um, but by default, I think they make it on everything to say that. Uh, okay, yeah. So it's not actually going to change anything? No. No, it just puts a little uh, blue button at the top. And if you don't want to install it, since it is a glorified website, I could actually give you the website link. It's just you have to remember it. So, you know. You're just trying to make it easy. Yep. Okay, well, the stream's going really well. The technology seems to be um, working tonight. I think I've got rid of that glitch. <laughs> I think okay. that's just Skype going. It was a bit flickery. I didn't want to give anyone a seizure or anything. Um, <laughs> okay, so Dan is back. Dan, is he's been on my channel for a while. He's made a few affiliate sites. He says he's in Chicago, and he, advertise, he advertises on Christian radio and have for 12 years for his primary business. How can I reach out to you for help with your Bible links? There are over five... <laughs> Is that 500,000 listeners? Cool. Um, yeah, what you'll want to do is we'll give you a link. Um, I want to make sure that um, you get the link from Alex. That way it's he gets credit. He's an affiliate. That's why he brings us on here and everything like that. That and to give you good info. Um, so I think he's got that link set up, and we'll, we'll announce it uh, once he's got that ready yeah, for you. Yeah, I think it's working. It should be wpeagle.com slash Marcus. I'll put it in the chat. Okay, so yeah, wpeagle.com slash Marcus. And if you need to spell Marcus, it's M A. R C U S. So you might need to com type it into your browser. Apps. For some reason, when you click on a link in the chat, it doesn't always work. So you just type it in, and it will work. Okay, cool, cool, awesome. Yeah, so that's kind of what you want to do is just really get creative with your traffic because I know there's a lot of people out there that have blogs. Maybe they have a blog about you know how moms can make money, or maybe they have something about knitting or fashion or makeup or magic tricks or whatever it is. 
and we understand about it that, hey, look, these people are looking for stuff, and all you have to do is really be creative about what you offer them. And when I do this, uh, we actually have a toolbar, which if you go to the wpeagle.com slash Marcus, you can get the toolbar. There's actually a affiliate offer search engine on there. So you go in, you search for your thing. It's got this, it's called the power search tool. And uh, you can go through and find affiliate offers for it. Now, what you're going to notice is that a lot of people, they, they search for affiliate offers, but they search the wrong way. So they're going to go through, and let's say they look for like a tax form. Okay, they're going to go to the, the search engine. They're going to type tax form in. Okay, there's no affiliate offer for a tax form. You got to find out what that tax form does and, and how to get involved. There's no affiliate offer for like download WordPress. All right, but if I can figure out what these people want and say, well, hey, here's how to download WordPress in five easy steps. By the way, you're also going to need this, this, and this. Maybe I'll give them a, uh, a backup plugin and be like, hey, you know, one time I lost my site. You need the backup plugin. Maybe I'll get them something else and it, and it really understands. Okay, Denise is asking some questions. She says, I truly wish I could understand this and make passive money. Well, it's not that hard to understand if you really focus on it because what you want to do is you want to focus on two things. One, you focus on your visitor. Okay, so here's your visitor here. Okay, if you don't have visitors and you've never set up a blog, get that toolbar, go through the trigger words, you'll find a niche, it'll be easy to rank for. Just trust me on that, go do it. Once you find your visitor, then you go through and you ask yourself, what's gonna make me money? Okay, so let's do a little fun thing. How many of you guys are up for like a little fun competition? Here? Yeah, let's make it interactive, right. why not? Excellent, let's be interactive here. What I want you guys to do is I want you to throw a bunch of niches at me. Okay, whatever market you're in, or maybe a market that you think would be a good challenge or whatever, go ahead and type that in the box and say, Marcus, what if I had traffic of people that were looking for X, right? Type that in the box and we'll go through and I'll say, hey, this is how I would make money on it. And maybe it'll let you in on a little insight of, of how we take the visitor, how we think about them and how we lead them to what makes us money. Okay, so that sounds fun. Denise says it sounds like fun, so that's cool. Okay, um, HRAG says, I made a website with WZone. Okay, cool, awesome. Well so, done, yeah, that's, that's, that's good work. Okay, excellent, so these are coming in fast, so I'll try to go fast. Um, so Denise so says, yeah, art, art steel, and crafts. Yeah, so we have carbon steel cookware. Excellent, on Offer Vault, which is where I find my offers, as well as the tool, um, you're gonna find what's called as seen on TV offers. Okay, so like you're watching late night TV and the guy's like, hey, check out the pan. And he's like, you know, running over the pan with his car to show you how sturdy it is. Okay, those as seen on TV companies, you can sell a pan for like, I think they do uh, either free with shipping or it's like 19 bucks, right? So they buy a $19 pan and I can get up to 25 to $30 for selling that pan because all as seen on TV offers are is big fat lead generators, so they pay us a lot, just like like the ab machines and stuff. So for the cookware, excellent, right? I would say, look at that, because a lot of people are gonna be like, well, I guess I'll just sell it through the Amazon affiliate link. Well, the Amazon affiliate link, you sell the same $19 pan, okay? It doesn't even have the badass sales page that this one's gonna have. You sell it for 19 bucks times your 4% affiliate commission, I mean, what are you ending up with? I, I can't even do the math, it's so low. Two bucks? Or no, not even that. Would it be two bucks? Uh, like no, that. no, it'd be less than that. <laughs> like 20 cents? Something yeah. like that? Yeah, so 20 cents. I mean, come on now, 20 cents? Seriously, I'm getting 20 to $30 over at the CPA network for selling the exact same pan. Okay, so very important, that's what we wanna do. Let's take a look at some others. Yeah, okay. so uh, arts and crafts, that's quite a broad thing. Which one? Art and crafts, Denise says. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn your audio up a little bit. I did hear that, but I'm just gonna turn it out okay. so I can hear the others. Okay, so uh, arts and crafts. Okay, excellent. Lots of people with arts and crafts blog. Um, there's actually arts and crafts toolbars, which are out there, they're really good. Um, you can start an arts and crafts mailing list. You can do uh, what's called an email zip submit. Okay, these are offers that pay you when someone either puts their email in a box and hits the button or puts their zip code in a box and gets a button. Now, a lot of these are over there, and I don't know, uh, are you in the States or are you in uh, UK, Denise? Because um, uh, I, I know, know here in the States we have like uh, Hobby Lobby, we have uh, Michael's uh, craft stores that you can go to, and a lot of times these email submit guys will have an offer where it's like, hey, get a you know $100 coupon or whatnot. Um, and I get paid like $1.50 when they put their zip code in. Um, I've done those a lot. I actually did that on my tattoo site that made a lot. Um, 
and I use a lot of them today as well. So they work really good. So I would go for that stuff. But I guess in, in, in that niche, have? you would want to have some quite specific content around, you know, how to paint a uh, watercolor or how to do some origami, some, some quite specific. Uh, exactly. And then also remember that a lot of the people that are going to come in um, are might be uh, like students and you can actually – backing them into like an art school or something if that's if that works and those pay a lot of money um and things like that but there's tons of stuff you just really have to get creative and then what i tell people also is if you have a product that's selling on your site let's say you go into your amazon analytics and you're like boom i am selling a ton of this pan right you could either go to the guy and have him drop ship the pan or you can order the pans in bulk yourself uh, and do it that way. Um, I did that with our gas power scooter website where I actually drop shipped the scooters, made a bunch of money that way. Um, because again, if I sold the scooter on Amazon, 4% of a $400 scooter is going to be 20 bucks. Uh, maybe if I'm lucky. Um, and I was doing these drop shipping, I was making 200 bucks a pop. So, you know, you really have to look at it because so many people just, they don't do this right. They don't focus on what's going to get them the maximum re return. And since I came from a world where we had to buy traffic, right? If you're paying 25 cents a click, you're going to need to convert it a lot better than the guy who just gets it free. So it's going to be a different mindset. And what I do is I bring this over to um, blog world, right? In the blogging, and then we make it work that way. So let's take a, a couple others. Are there some other good ones on there? Yeah. Uh, handcrafted pens mm -hmm. is an interesting one. Giant sweets, uh, which I, I guess. Sweets like candy. Candy, yeah. Uh, candy, um, that could work. Um, I probably wouldn't go for that market, but if I had traffic in that market and it was free and I had to convert it, um, I would probably do either a email zip submit or I would do like a toolbar download that's, that's related but not really, like when I did um, – into like profile layouts. Okay, people wanted to make their profiles really cool on Facebook and MySpace and all these things. And so what I did is I said, all these people are looking up this stuff and it's extremely cheap. I was getting traffic for two cents. I got hundreds of visitors every day for free, actually built it up to thousands uh, every day free. I was like, how do I make money? And what I did is I said, well, you know, these people probably want like music players or maybe they'll want to change their mouse cursor on their profile and people went crazy over this, right? And so I was like, hey, put this music player here. And I actually sold so many of the smiley faces and cursors that they actually went out and made a profile generator for me and paid me when people downloaded it. And it was free for them. They didn't even have to opt in. Uh, and I got like $3 uh, pop on those, which is really cool. Wow. Okay. Um, let's see. Which other ones are there? Uh, Berkey water filters. What, uh... Okay. Um, Berkey water filters, if I had traffic for it, I would try to get that exact product and I try to get paid as much as I could for it. Um, usually I don't go for product centered traffic because if the product gets off the market or they decide they don't want to pay you or don't want affiliates anymore, you're kind of like your yeah. site's done. So it's better uh, to pick, a, pick a, a niche with a particular subject and then you drop products in, into that uh, exactly. or, or you think of products. So yeah, it's, it's trying to think of what people's need needs is. So whether they're looking to create a website, learn art and crafts, um, mm -hmm. you know, get a good pen, that kind of thing. Uh, and then you're able to find some products that you can then uh, promote. Exactly. Yep. Cool. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Or are we kind of is this? Yeah. Yeah. So another one here, Charles says fishing, which is a very broad niche. You can imagine there's a lot of fishing websites out there, how to catch a big prize carp or whatever. Yeah. What I would do with fishing is first off, there is a, as seen on TV, perfect pole, uh, which I promoted for a little bit, but I don't know much about the fishing market. So it kind of died away. Um, but you know, it does all right. Uh, there's also fishing eBooks. There's fishing courses. Um, you can also um, run ads for uh, different fishing charters if they're into that. A lot of people don't realize, but when you have the market on a Google AdWords or other search engines where they're paying a lot, like web hosting or um, accident attorneys, right? They pay a fortune on um, their ads. A lot of people don't realize, but AdSense will pay you a portion of that if you're the one who generates the traffic. Obviously, you want to read their terms and conditions and do it the right way. Um, but you know, I, I did this with a site. Um, for example, I'll give you an example here. Uh, we had the site for gas prices. Okay, people were looking for prices of gas. They were like, okay, I want to find cheap gas in my area. And uh, they would go through and they'd be like, okay, cheap gas. We had a site 
Okay. Um, and the site would go through and it's like, okay, uh, you're going to get cheap gas. Here's how to do it. Okay. There was a gas toolbar we, we got them into. And I also had a page where we got them into gas rewards, credit cards. Okay. Cause I was like, okay, I can't sell gas on the internet. It's not going to be fiscally responsible. Um, so what I did is I was like, okay, well, if you want to save uh, 30 cents a gallon or whatever it is, get this gas rewards credit cards. Okay. And it worked great. We got, uh, actually got a phone call from, I think it was credit.com at the time or something. And they were like, dude, you're generating so many leads. We're going to set something up special for you. And, uh, you know, I, I did really well because these people were looking up gas and I was like, okay, well you can save money this way. So you got to think outside the box of what these people would want. Okay. That's great. There's a few other things, but I mean, these are more general kind of products and subjects. So totally British says moss killers, but I guess, you know, if you've got any sort of gardening sort of traffic or that kind of thing, you'd be able to promote that product. I would, I would go for, for moss killers. What I would do is I would write or make a video about the moss killers. I would try to get them into the products. Okay. So there's probably going to be some ads seen on TV. Um, Amazon's also one. Also, you could just go to Google and type in moss killer affiliate program, see what comes up. Um, and then what I would also do, because I know that, that leads are sold for pest control companies, I would go for that. Uh, so for one of the ones we did here when we moved to Florida, um, our grass started dying. And I'm like, what the hell? Our grass is dying. We're watering it. And it rains all the time. Um, and it just started dying. And someone was like, well, you have chinch bugs. I was like, what the hell is a chinch bug? And he's like, well, look, it's this little bug. And he eats up your grass and it'll eat your whole lawn. You need pest control service, right? So chinch bugs. You want traffic easy, make a site about chinch bugs or something, super easy, and then you back end them. And for those forms where they fill out the form for uh, pest control, it's like, hey, get a pest control quote. Um, you get like 15 to 20 bucks for that bad boy. And, you know, you're off to the races. Wow. So, yeah, uh, another, that's what I would do for Moscow. Another one there, oral hygiene. <laughs> if you've got some oral hygiene, maybe it's all about breath. Dental insurance. Teeth. Yeah. Uh, I would sell dental insurance on that. Um, very, very good way to go. Um, also you could sell, you know, different toothbrushes and things, but dental insurance, like what you're going to have is in your market, you're going to have like the jewel, you're going to have the offer that makes all the money. Okay. And it's really going to look like 90% is this one offer. Everything else sucks, but you know, gives me a little bit of money. Um, and for that, like for me, uh, we found out the word cost of braces. Um, I actually got the network marketing company that I was in back then, I don't do network marketing anymore. Um, but they, they actually were like, Hey dude, you can only do 10 leads on the internet per, per month or whatever. And they killed my income because we were taking people from cost of braces over to dental insurance. And it, it was perfect, right? You look at it and most people are like, well, what am I going to sell to people looking up cost of braces? Well, think about it. The person's sitting here. He's like, I got to shell out eight grand for my kid to get braces. I want to know how much it's going to cost. Am I getting ripped off? And we're like, you could save 50% right now. Boom, get dental insurance. Cost you 40 bucks. I got 100 bucks when I sold it. Um, so it's really cool. Wow. Okay. Um, so David has got a question. Do you recommend anyone? So is there any like CPA networks or anywhere that you can get some good sign up to become a lead generator, as it were? Um, well, I usually tell people to go with the network that has your offer. Okay. So for me, when I, when I build a site, I'm like, okay, who has the offer? Okay, because first and foremost, I want the offer that fits. I don't want the offer I can get. Okay, I want an offer that, like, in my mind, I look at it, I'm like, gas prices. If I could somehow get $3 to tell you how much gas in your area is, I'd do it. But that offer doesn't exist. So then I go and I say, okay, well, are there any perfect offer? Okay, perfect would be Bible, download the Bible. That's a perfect offer. That thing is going to convert like mad. It's perfect. Now, gas prices, I don't have the perfect, but I do have other things I can use. So we go through and we're like, what else can we use? And then you go in, you look up the affiliate offer, and whoever has it, sign up with them because they have the offer you want. Um, now, in my course, I actually teach you how to get accepted to the network, which ones I use, um, which ones have the offers that are most likely to be used, and stuff like that. But again, it's going to come down to a per-offer basis. Whoever's got it, you use it. Um, like if you want the Bible toolbar, you know, go to the one who has that. Don't go for all the networks. Go for the one that has that and specifically focus on that offer. So I think one okay, of the, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I think one of the key messages there is is that a good affiliate is not tied to any one merchant. They have a whole host of merchants they're signed up with and they're getting paid from all different kind of companies. So don't just stick with Amazon or whatever. You know, that could be one little uh, 
but uh, you know string to your bow but you really want to be signed up with lots of different merchants lots of different affiliate networks so that you, you're able to offer lots of different offers so that you can fit them in, in with your content and your sites exactly and you'll find too that uh, sometimes like on the toolbar things um, I was with one affiliate network and they were like giving me I think 275 per download um, I called another one up I said hey look I'm running a thousand leads a day they're like we'll give you four bucks boom instantly I mean that's like what a 40% raise right away and when you're doing you know a thousand leads a day that's that's a huge huge difference yeah so don't be scared uh, to switch if you get a better offer or you find a better product exactly yep cool good David I hope that answers your question okay so we're gonna run for another 10 minutes or so and um, we did okay. we did manage to start on time today and it's all going nice and smoothly which is great um, so yeah, keep the questions coming in. If not, then I'll just pick a topic and um, Marcus will will talk about it. There's a cool. I don't know how many people are watching right now. We have a peak of 52, which is not bad for me. I think that's nearly a record. Cool. Um, so that's good. So yeah, if you've got any more questions for Marcus, then now would be a good time to say. Cool. Okay, I guess not. <laughs> uh, they'll probably come in. There's a little delay, and then they got to type and think of them and everything. Yeah. There's, there we go. There's one. Is it difficult to set up a site with two or more affiliates on one site? That's from R7. It's not difficult, but it might affect conversion. What I see a lot of people do is they think that the more affiliate offers they have, the more money they're going to make, which is not true. Like if I had this site, and you know, you get rid of all the Bibles I had. And you're like, okay, well, what if I just put like a Bible toolbar? What if I had one for, um, you know, some other religious thing or something for something else and something for something else and just let them choose? What happens is when people have to choose between like more than three options, they're probably not going to choose. And they're certainly not going to choose right then and there. So, um, so it's literally holding someone's hand and saying, this is the product you want and, and basically oh, make, yeah. making the choice for them. By far. And even telling them how to do it. Like I used to have little... Um, like I would match the look of my click here to get the toolbar with the actual download button. I'd make it, you know, same color, everything. So they know what to expect. If I'm sending them to an order form, I'll actually show them on video or something like, here's how you do it. Like when I send people to web hosting, I got an image. Okay. Here's the first page. Here's the second page. Make sure you click this here and then fill this out, you know, and, and you really, really yeah, make it easy. You. People don't like hard stuff. If they get stuck, if they have to think too much, then they'll just stop, won't they? Exactly. Yep. Yep. So it is easy to do, but sometimes you might not yeah. want to do it. And that really, as I've said this before, that is the real kind of purpose of an affiliate is you're helping people buy, you're helping people get somewhere. Uh, and that's, yep. you know, between you're, you're that middleman between them and the merchant. And you've got to help yeah. them. And, and help. a true affiliate, because there's a lot of people who do like launch jacking, which is, you know, you take a product that's coming out and you rank for it. And then your job is to like give them a bonus or close them or whatever. That's okay. It works. But again, you're tied to a product. Uh, the true affiliate marketing is someone who's going to generate new customers who didn't know something existed. And when we have something like IRS form, right, they didn't really know that they were going to go for this uh, tax attorney or tax book or whatever. When we go for the Wix, they didn't really know they were going to get web hosting. So I'm actually creating a new customer out of thin air. And this is what I call the market flipper method, where you're flipping a market from something that they think they want into something that you know they need. Um, and oftentimes this works really, really well. Like, um, you know, uh, someone types in like uh, qualifications for an FHA loan, right? Great word. I use it all the time. Qualifications for an FHA loan. They want to know what credit score they need for the FHA mortgage. And we're like, okay, well, here's what you need. Here's what you need to do next. Number one, get your credit report. That's offer number one. Number two, apply at this mortgage lender and get multiple offers. Number three, if your credit's too low, click here for credit repair. Boom, I got three offers. Now they're done in a different way, so I could have three there because it's like a step-by-step -step thing. Okay, we've got some good questions, last minute questions coming in now, so let's let's rattle through these. Um, David okay. says, um, oh no, hang on, I'll go for Ian. Oh no, Denise maybe. <laughs> uh, I don't know what Denise is talking about. Is anyone offering this service for an affordable price? Which service was that, Denise? I think I might have missed the first bit of chat. Um, Ian says, if you had a blog in place, where would be your best place to start for traffic? You've already mentioned that you shouldn't discard uh, paid traffic. If you pick the right keyword, then you should be able to rank fairly easily on the search engines. Is there anywhere else that you go for traffic? 
Um, if it's the right market, sometimes I'll go for banner ads. Um, banner ads are great if you use them the right way. Um, because what you're doing is you're just siphoning traffic from a different site. And if you do it the right way, I teach you guys how to do this, uh, where you make a banner that, that really gets conversion. And, and again, same kind of psychological principles you lose, use with the Bibles and stuff, uh, but you use it with your banner and you know, you're able to get traffic. Like ours are always doing constantly like 10% better than, or 10 times better than the, than the top performing ad that usually is up there. Wow. David says, when writing blog posts, does it matter if you have multiple posts with the same subject for different keywords? So I guess- As long as the content fits. Yeah. Yeah. And in theory, you are like writing be, for keywords. You, know, you can't have the same spun content. No. Yeah. So it, there'd be a fresh article for each one. Um, but exactly. yeah, that's fine. Ron says, what is your favorite niche market? Niche market. Ah, my favorite <laughs> niche market. Niche, niche. I don't really have one. It's always like trigger words and stuff. Um, I would say my favorite was probably the smiley faces just because I made money on smiley faces and I think that's really cool. So that's probably my favorite one. Vital says Amazon bans affiliates for not making sales within three months. Is it possible to drive traffic that quick and start making sales? I'd, I'd say so. I mean, what's the quickest you've had something up and started getting some money coming in? 13 minutes. That was my record. Wow. Um, from the time I bought the domain name to the time I actually made money was 13 minutes. Um, that was with paid traffic. I, I have done it with free traffic, though. There was one where I did free traffic, and uh, it was really quick. And those are the numbers that I actually tested. Uh, as I'm sure I've done others that are very similar. Um, but it can be very quick. Like Traffic's not difficult to get when you think about – all you have to do is think about where your, your visitors hang out. Um, and it's not like, you know, 1999 where you have to submit to the search engines, wait six months. It's not like that. Like these things get picked up right away. Um, so yeah, to make sales within the, if you're not making sales within the first three months, you're probably doing something wrong. Again, results, not typical. You know, most people don't make money. We don't know what to expect. There's yeah. always risk, but Marcus has been doing know. it for a long time. Remember that. Yeah, there you go. And, um, you know, you have to ask yourself this. Here's the question. The question isn't how fast can I get traffic? The question is, is, is my traffic online right now looking for me? Okay, so, so pick a niche. I'm out there. I go for gas prices. There is someone right this second searching for gas prices on Google right now, right now. If you can get in front of him right now, which you can, then you can make money. Are there people on Quora? you know, big answer question search engine looking for your stuff. Yeah, they are. Are there people on forums looking for your stuff? Yeah, they are. Are there people on other websites looking? Because here's the deal. Someone's getting your traffic right now. All you got to do is figure out how you can get it. And it's not that hard to do. You could do it fast. Um, if I built a website and I had to wait three months to get sales, I'd be out of business. That's not how I operate. Um, I start getting antsy if I don't make sales like the next day or a week or something. Right. Um, so we really got to focus on that. Good tips. Harag says he downloaded your toolbar. Is there any free tips or on there, or, or does he have to? Oh, tons. Pay. I think yeah. that's, that's what he's trying to say. Okay, yeah. good. World Soccer says, "Is Amazon Associate a good place to begin, or would you suggest any network for beginners?" I guess it just depends on your niche and your niche and your content. And that, as Marco said earlier, then you're going to find an offer or a product that fits fits that perfectly. Exactly, and I would recommend that everyone who's interested in this. Get the toolbar. I think after you put your name and email um, on the wpeagle.com slash Marcus um, on that site, and he'll have it in the link below after as well. Um, you're going to go there, put your name and email, and then you'll get the toolbar. You can add it to Chrome, or you could just check out my other free stuff, but the toolbar is awesome. I mean, it's really cool, so use it. It has a trigger word tool, and the trigger word tool, like if you don't have a niche, use it, you will have a niche. If you don't have a niche within like 20 minutes of using it, you're using it wrong and go watch the video again. It's so easy. You will always find it because what we do is instead of going through and typing in web hosting or, um, you know, whatever, I don't think about anything. I go through and I'm like, okay, well, what do people want to download? I put download in my trigger word tool and it's going to say, download this, download that, download this, download Bible. Oh, wow. People want to download the Bible. Boom. Um, or it'll say form. I'll put form in. It'll say form this, form that, driver's license renewal form. Oh, hey, cool. Check this out. People want to renew their driver's license. Maybe I can get them into car insurance. Um, you know, and it's going to show you the niches that are very untapped, very easy. You will always find them um, because here's the deal. Four million people every 60 seconds search Google. Four million people every 60 seconds. Boom, like that. 
And when we look at that, it's like, can you get traffic right now? Well, I know 4 million people are searching. Let's use the Google tool, find out what they're searching for, find out how to give them something that really helps them, and then find out how to back end them into an affiliate offer. That's good stuff. Um, what have we got here? So Mark says, can you recommend a WordPress plugin with the WooCommerce to show YouTube videos, but keeping the products and gallery images? So I, I guess you want to drop a YouTube video onto a product there. You can just drop the code straight in. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I don't know if a plugin off the top of my head, but there there is a way of adding YouTube videos to products. Uh, I think there's a free plugin. Just do a search. You should be able to find something. Well, what I would do too is I would say a lot of people ask me this. They're like, can I just you know embed a video on my site? Well, you can. Is it going to sell your stuff? If it's not going to sell your stuff, if it's not going to do the job, if it's got another URL or it links to a different thing, it's not going to work, right? I want a video that's like, hey, click the button and pay me. Or click the button and do this so I can get paid. You don't want to distract um, people. Yeah, so we want it really, really focused. Now, I have a couple plugins that do uh, videos on your site. We actually have a custom one uh, that's it, it's like its own video server, which is really cool. Okay. Okay, another SEO type question there. When you type in my website, one of my websites in Google, it comes up with a very structured listing. Um, how do you do that? One of my niches is on the page one of Google, but the listing is just standard. It hasn't got that kind of, um, what do they call that when you have the site links or whatever is it? Uh, but uh, there's not a lot you can really do about it. It's basically that, that happens when you come up in position one generally on Google. Um, you, yeah. get, you get your home page and then it might list a few of your other pages. Um, I don't know if there's any way you can really make that happen as long as you've got a good structured site and high clean internal linking. Mm -hmm. Google should just do that for you. I know you can adjust it in Google Webmaster Tools. Have you got any thoughts on that? Um, I don't worry about it too much. I, it actually happened on my site by accident. Um, so I think it happens when you're kind of an authority in your niche and you have more stuff. Um, so yeah, I would worry more about getting the, the number one ranking and then worry that about that later. Happen, because, yeah. And people aren't going to click that stuff anyway. I mean, some do, but not really. They're going to click your number one. They generally do, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ron says, Marcus, what is your favorite traffic platform? I think you might have already touched on this, but just want to clarify. Or does, uh, does, whoever it, does, has it. Does it vary? It varies depending on the market, the niche. And the exactly. So what I do is I do flexible marketing, which is, in my opinion, the best way to do it. Because first, I want to find my visitors. Okay, who, who are they? Okay, then I'm going to go to Google. And I'm going to go to Google, and I'm going to type in my keyword. And I'm going to see what comes up. Guess what? If Quora comes up, you better bet your butt I'm going to be on Quora. If YouTube comes up, you bet your butt I'm going to make a YouTube video. If um, Facebook comes up, I'm going to make a Facebook group or I'm going to start commenting on his. If there's other sites that come up, I'm going to see if they have banner ads. If there's no advertisers, I'm going to buy traffic. If there's um, very few, if I do the search in quotes, okay, which also the power search tool on the toolbar does this for you. Uh, if you do it in quotes and there's very few people, I'm going to go for SEO. So you really want to do it really focused on Where's my traffic? What are they doing? What's already working? And then what are they gonna what are they gonna be offered? Which is really important. Okay. Sorry, I think we may have had a little bit of a lag there. People might have missed it. Sorry. Okay. If you no let, let us know what you missed, and we'll try and fix it. I noticed that the the stream upload dropped. Then I don't know what it okay. was. Someone was downloading in the in the house. Jimmy just says, "Sorry, where do I get the tool? The link only offers a PDF." Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a toolbar, there's PDF. Like if you if you go to that site, which is wpeagle.com slash Marcus. slash Marcus, put your name and email, you're going to be on my list. We have webinars every week. We have uh, actually two of them every week, except for this week because I was uh, home with the kids and our dog was sick, so I didn't have one this week. Uh, but every week we have two of those. We have tons of videos. I got tons of resources. Uh, my goal is to give you tons of value up front. And by the time you watch the value, you'll be like, dude, Marcus, I got to buy something from you because your stuff's awesome. Then you could do that too. We'll let you do that. Uh, so really cool. So there's a good question here. So say you've you've seen an offer that you'd like the look of, but you haven't got your site set up yet. But it's it's asking f um, for a site URL or whatever on the uh, application form. Have you got any tips on that? Uh, yeah, make a site. What I do is I teach people how to make a hub site. Uh, which after you guys go to that site and opt in, you'll see how to do that. There's a video I did last week uh, about how to make your hub site. We make our hub site. We use that as our application. Um, and don't don't spend too much time on it. Just kind of you know get your hub site up. That way you have something. Because what they want to do is they want to know that you're not going to go like spam Craigslist or something, which affiliate marketing companies usually hate. Um, with the exception of the Uber offer, there's some dude doing crazy stuff with the Uber offer on there. Again, 
I don't think that's in the terms and conditions, but whatever he's doing is kind of creative. Um, so he's know. getting away with it. He is getting away with it. And I know he's making a lot too. So, um, but again, like that, like how to make extra money, Uber, there you go. Uh, affiliate marketing. There you go. Uh, you just put them over there and thanks for the well wishes for the dog. She is starting to get better. I made her a homemade meal last night. She liked it. So, wow. Well. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to, we're going to wrap up in a second. Thanks right. for everyone that joined me. Thanks very much for Marcus. Before I go, I want to just ask you one more question and we'll leave it with that as a final thought. There's a mm -hmm. number of people, um, Denise, especially tonight and a couple of other people. And I hear this all the time. There's people that, you know, they're so desperate to earn some kind of income online using affiliate marketing. They, they see the dream or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. And they've tried a few things. They've maybe bought a few courses, but they still haven't maybe made any money. Is there one mm -hmm. thing you'd say to them? Yeah, I would say look at it very deliberate because the problem is is people are going to they're going to get started and they they see the goal of the money and they see the goal of what they want and they focus on that. They're like I want $10,000 a month. That's what I want. And they totally forget about what's going on, right? Because you have to look at it and you have to say what can I do? Okay? So if you want to make $10,000 a month, okay, you take that and you divide that by 31 or however many days are in the current month and you get about, I don't know, 300 bucks a day. Okay. Now you look at this and you might say, well, a hundred thousand dollars a year sounds crazy, Marcus. I don't think I could ever make that online. And I'm like, well, what about 300 bucks a day? Okay. I look at that and I say, okay, $300 a day. That's my target. That's less than, that's less than $15 an hour all day, every day, which our websites don't sleep. So boom, there you go. Right. So we look at that. I'm going to shut this door real quick. We got a little bit of a windstorm coming on. Gotta love Florida. Um, but uh, so we look at that, and we're like $300 a day. All right. If I'm in a how to set up a blog market, that's only three signups of a hosting. That's it. That's nothing, right? Three. You telling me you can't find three people every day to sign up for web hosting on the entire internet with billions of people? All right. Well, you say, Marcus, um, what about what about the Bible thing? All right. All you got to do it's three three bucks a download. Get a hundred people to download the Bible. You think there's not 100 people who will download a Bible on the internet today? I know there is. I've gotten them. and I There's probably way more, yeah. <laughs> probably way more. There's probably 10,000, right, or more than that. Um, and we look at it, and we're like, okay, well, here's what you got to do. You got to be objective. You got to look at this. You got to stop thinking about I want, I want, I want. You got to stop thinking about the guru said, the guru, because who cares? No one cares about your success like you care about it. So what you got to do is you got to get out there. You got to say, what am I getting paid on? Okay. Here's the first thing. Who pays me? Okay. If Amazon pays too little, they ain't going to be paying me because I don't want too little. I got to have something that's going to work. Um, if the hosting company pays me, good. If the IRS uh, attorney guy pays me, if the form guy pays me, who pays me? Okay, you break it down, you look at your traffic, you say, this is how we set it up. Now, you gotta set this up in the right way. I teach you how to do it. My advice for everyone's kind of loaded, but I spent a lot of time building a program which teaches you everything. It's the Simple Sites program. Um, if you go to wpeagle.com uh, slash Marcus, okay, go there, opt in, you'll see the buttons for the Simple Sites program. It literally walks you through everything from starting your first site to finding your niche, to going through and putting the plugins on. I actually have, I spent like $100,000 developing plugins that do stuff like these little Bibles and do stuff like the drop down and do stuff like the pages and posts that make it for you. So it's gonna be a lot easier. And if you do that, it's just gonna force you through the process. And here's what I tell you to do. I tell you to get started and then come to me and tell me what you did, right? Be like, Marcus, you know, I, I set up this site about gas and it's not working. Okay, and I'll be like, hey, check it out. This is why it's not working. Put the gas button up there. Whoa, it worked. Um, or, hey, I'm not getting ranked on the search engine. Oh, whoa, too competitive. Go for this keyword. And we offer support to you as part of that that's going to make it work really, really well. And if you're struggling, that's the best place to go because you actually have people that are going to you know, answer your question and help you and, and guide you in the right direction. And one of my friends who I was on a call with, um, known him for years, he was like, Marcus, I love when I have you on the calls because you answer the question I should have asked, right? And he's like, I asked a question and you told me what I should have asked you and how to answer that question. And, and that's kind of what it is because a lot of people don't know how to do this. They don't know where to start. They don't know what to do with a niche. They don't know how to get this. And what I do is I lead you by the hand through everything and give you all the tools and say, 
hey, that's how we do it. Um, so yeah, those would be my two advices for people that are struggling and need to get started. Wow. I think everyone's really enjoyed it. Looking at the chat, everyone said they've got a lot out of it. They've really enjoyed it. So that's that's good. Cool. Um, hopefully you've inspired. You go check out Marcus's stuff. And remember, once you, I think a lot of you have got a good idea in your head now in terms of what you need to do. So now you need to just get on and do something. Don't worry if it doesn't work out first time. You know, it doesn't always work out first time. As Marcus said, sometimes it needs just a little adjustment. You've got the wrong keyword. Your page layout's not quite right. Your site isn't quite right. You're in the wrong niche. Um, but you know all that can be fixed and then it'll be the next one that you know starts working for you and then the next one the next one and as you go forward and you've been doing it for as long as marcus has you know it then just becomes a uh, second nature and you're able to get some money coming in within 13 minutes so yeah i'd like to say thank you very much for marcus to marcus for joining me again i mean it is the second one this week um and it seems like the technology has worked so i'm glad you could all hear us and see us and um you know maybe i'll do something on marcus's channel sometime soon or i'll have him back on mine um in in the near future but for now i think i'm going to sign off if you're new to the channel by the way please do subscribe uh, it's good to see you if you liked tonight's um webinar or today's or this morning wherever you are in the world do click the like button if you didn't like it click the dislike button and uh, leave a comment below let me know how i can do it better next time but for now cool. i'll let marcus sign off if you've got any final words and then then we'll wrap it up uh, be deliberate. Go get the free tools. Go to wpeagle.com slash Marcus. That's M-A-R-C-U-S. So wpeagle.com slash Marcus. Put your name and email in. You're going to get a lot of our tools. You'll get emails from me, but I promise they'll always have great value. And if you ever think one doesn't have great value, just click the unsubscribe button. Hardly anyone ever does, but they like the value. So wpeagle.com slash Marcus. Check those out. Uh, we got lots of videos, lots of tools for you. Check out the Simple Sites course. And if you're new and you don't have a niche, check out our high ticket niches as well, because that's the service where I actually pick a niche for you based on a little question that I ask you. Um, and we get you a niche. We set it up. We put all the stuff on your site and then we send you off and tell you, here's how to get the traffic. Here's how to make the money. Here's what you do. Boom off to the races um, so go opt in and then if you're interested in that check it out let us know and uh, we'll help you get that so that you can get the results you want but I hope you enjoyed it and uh, yeah I look forward to having you on the list and in the programs and at least the free toolbar uh, so go grab that now okay good well good evening goodbye and I'll see you next time bye for now thanks guys <laughs>